Um, what is your take on, from what you've looked at, being involved with uh, organizations that are, are looking into this, et cetera, uh, whether affirming care has been proven to prevent suicide? I, th I think that this is a really interesting question. I am, so I, first of all, I'm not a researcher. Uh, I am a, an activist, a patient activist, so I, I do have some expertise from that angle. Um, uh, and her name is right on the tip of my tongue, uh, Olson Kennedy. Um, for some reason, her first name's not coming to mind. Uh, has, has been doing a, a longitudinal study of a group of young people that she's been transitioning for uh, like five or six years now. And she released uh, an update on this cohort recently that has been medicalized for two years. And I think that this very short term uh, research that she's done has shown that, I, I don't know if it's specifically about suicidality, probably not, but uh, some of the uh, comorbidities that, that are related to that, like depression and, and anxiety, are, um, I guess, imp like those, those, those measures are improved. And that this is a very short-term um, view of this particular cohort. We'll learn more as, as this, as this uh, group ages. But the, the, this was um, used as a rationale saying, well, you can see transition helps. There's been a couple of other studies that are very short term that, that show that um, relative to some other samples or populations that they're, they're comparing against, that, that the youth that are, are getting a gender affirming care have uh, some better numbers. Let me, let me address that for a second. This, this is my view as somebody who transitioned. If you have a group of young people who are uh, depressed or anxious, who feel neglected, who, who want attention, and who feel better when you're getting attention, who felt perhaps marginalized in the household because uh, they were competing for attention with siblings, but now because they've transitioned, they're getting, they're getting more share of attention from their parents, especially since those parents might have uh, internalized this idea that their kids will kill themselves if they don't transition. Um, they're getting more attention from their schools, from their classmates. Um, I don't know that there's really a way that you can clearly remove all of those effects of the extra attention that that child is getting from the effects that you're seeing in the very short term on uh, transition. So there's, I think there's going to be a, a, a lot of debate whether or not affirming care is proven to improve any of these mental health measurements, uh, suicidality aside, because there's there's just no way to parse what part of any improvement that you see in the short term is related to the uh, extra amount of care they're getting from being trans. And it's possible that if their other mental health conditions had been treated as seriously and and treated as important as transition, it's possible that, that we would see those measurements increase also. So that's the short term. What we know about adult transitioners, uh, I think this is a 2010 from the Dehaney uh, study, is that mortality among people who transition is greatly increased uh, compared to, to people who don't. So there, there's a, a number of factors for that. One of the biggest mortality factors for, for people who transition are um, people like me, we just, we just neglect to take care of our health. Uh, we s smoke more, we drink more, we do drugs more. And when you have all of those high risk behaviors, have sex, have uh, risky sex more, when you have all of those sorts of high risk behaviors, your, your um, mortality rate in, increases as well. 
But I think what we're going to see of this uh, very young cohort is that as they reach adulthood and they're no longer getting all of the same sort of attention that they are from their care providers and their, their teachers and their, and their parents, that there's going to be um, anything that we see that's, that's positive in childhood, that that's not likely to be sustainable into adulthood because all of that support is eventually going to go away. That's a totally normal process. We call that becoming an adult. But if these young people are not learning the, the same sort of um, acclimation skills to the, that we all have to learn as, as we become adults, uh, I, I think that they're going to have a very hard time. Unfortunately, uh, for... Uh, I don't know if fortunately or unfortunately, I could be wrong on this, but I think we're going to see as, as these longitudinal studies increase that it's likely that these childhood transitioners are going to uh, reveal that they have more adult-like patterns of um, higher mortality than their peers. That's, that's gonna be my guess.